So that pretty much covers the, the chain side of the thing, but we're going to just quickly talk about uh, Zhao Bao side, right? So Zhao Bao side is quite controversial because during Yang Chan's time, they are not really well known. And even during the later generations, they are not well known either. So they branch only sort of become more... F they, they first wrote a book also in the 1930s, but they kind of becoming only um, predominant in the more recent year, maybe in the past 30 years, I would say, or 40 years, they're becoming more well-known and more international and getting more recognition. And I personally assume, right, I can't say this for a fact, but I personally feel that, you know, they are envious of Chen Village's development in terms of the money they have, how big their village has expanded, how much, you know, how much wealth they have accumulated from being the founder of Tai Chi. They pretty much are envious of that and therefore they start to have an aggressive campaign to claim that they are the founder of Tai Chi. And they you know in order to do so they goes about to discredit Chen style and Yang style like I mentioned earlier to make themselves look better. And to me that is a pretty trash thing to, to do. I have nothing against the martial art in itself or, or Chen Qingping, but the current you know the modern generation they're doing some very nasty stuff. So they claim is that you know the Chen village never had this martial art. It was always passed down in the Zhao Bao village. They say that from Zhang Sanfeng, it passed some some way down the line to a guy called Wang Zhongyue, right? The, the the name that associated with the Tai Chi classic. And Wang Zhongyue taught a guy called Jiang Fa. Let me just write Jiang Jiang Fa here. He's a important guy. Fa. Okay. So, so Wang Zhongyue, so Zhang Sanfeng, Wang Zhongyue, Jiang Fa, eventually was passed to someone in the Zhao Bao village, and through seven generations, it got down to Chen Qingping. And around the fourth generation, I believe, when there's another Chen surnamed master, it was passed to the Chen village. And they claimed that they did not give them the Wang Zhongyue Tai Chi classic, and therefore the Chen Village version is incomplete. Um, and which is why Yang Chan's version was also incomplete, and Wu Yixiang's version is the complete version, and that's why they are better. Um, so that is basically they claim. Now the problem over here is that firstly, Wu Yixiang did study under Chen Qingping, and you know maybe he did complete what he was missing with Chen Qingping. So in a sense, he should be quite grateful of Chen Qingping and Zhao Bao Village, in terms of his martial art progression. So if that were the case, you know if the claim is true, then why did Chen Qingping not tell Wu Yixiang that Chen Village didn't invent the stuff; they learned from us, and we are the original? And if Wu Yixiang learned about that from Chen Qingping, why did he not tell everyone that? Okay, um. So maybe you say, yeah, but maybe he respects the young family. Possible, it is possible uh, to save face. But then at least he would have told Li, Li Yiyu the truth. And Li Yiyu would have written in the book. And even if Li Yiyu also wanted to, to, to save face for the young family and don't want to completely discredit Chen village, they could at least include Zhao Bao village in the text, right? But the text that I, I read just now only mentioned Wang Zhongyue's text and it mentions the Chen village. It did not say a single word about Jiang Fa or Zhao Bao village, and that is very suspicious. If they, if the Zhao Bao claim is true, especially you know, Li Yu and this whole line has direct connection to the Zhao Bao lineage of Tai Chi, so to speak, but they do not mention them at all. Some people might argue that if your Zhao village want to keep this secret, but that can't be the case because. Wu Yixiang did not keep it a secret that he went to Zhao Bao village and studied with Chen Qingping. If, if the Zhao village need to keep the martial art a secret completely, and they taught Wu Yixiang in secrecy, they would have asked him to not expose the, this whole event. But that's not the case. Wu Yixiang went back and told everyone that he went to Zhao Bao village and learned from Chen Qingping. So clearly, they did not need him to keep everything in secrecy, and therefore, if, if, if at the time Chen Qingping believed that their village was actually the original source, he would very well tell Wu Yixiang, and then it, was, it would be reflected in Li Yiyu's text. Right? What you need to understand is that back in the old days, even today, for those of us who are old school in martial arts, we really we highly value 
the lineage tree or our ancestor who we learn from, right? That's like the first most important thing. Before you even learn the first motion, the master will tell you who his master is and who his grandmaster is and where this whole line come from. So I don't believe for a second that Chen Jinping would not have told that to Li to Wu Yuxiang if he believed that Jiang Fa passed this martial art in the Zhao Bao village and not the Chen village. So that's the biggest problem with this claim. The other issue is obviously the legitimacy of Jiang Fa and Wang Zongyue. The only evidence we have of Wang Zongyue connected to Tai Ji is from the Tai Ji classic text. Okay, we're probably going to talk about the text in detail in another video. But the text, firstly, we don't know who wrote it, right? It is called Wang Zongyue's text, but there's no evidence of Wang Zongyue actually writing the text because the, the thing is, no one has seen Wang Zongyue. They can't even put a date to him. Oh, they, they suspect he's from Shanxi province, but they have no evidence of the person existing or record, any record of him or that he does Tai Chi. All they have is a text that, you know, if Wang Zongyue is... So if you think about Chen Qingping as the seventh generation, Jiang Fa being the first generation, and Wang Zongyue being even further, that is like nine generations of, of, of missing information until Wu Yixiang got a text that says this is written by Wang Zongyue. How trustworthy is that? I'm not saying it's impossible, but you can't just take that text and say this is enough evidence to say Wang Zongyue existed and he was the one who taught Tai Chi to the Zhao Bao village. Another thing is that if you ever, ever read if you ever read the Tai Chi classic, the one by Wang Zongyue, you realize that it only ever talks about philosophical things like you know, well, I'm gonna give you a few examples, right, of how when you in the correct Tai Chi state even a fly cannot land on your body. A feather cannot be added, a feather amount of weight cannot be added to you. It, it refers to the Tai Chi's ability to dissolve and, and make the four slips off. It talks about how a, a, a person in the 70s or 80s can still defeat a younger man, which, which means that this martial art is not based on strings, but based on something else. So it goes to talk about a lot of these philosophical understandings behind Tai Chi. It does not mention anything about how to train Tai Chi, what motions involved, what principal power there is, what kind of, you know, anything that's practical. It does not mention anything. So for all we know, the Tai Chi classic could just be a text on the, on the, on the mentality or on the, on the metaphysical level of, of Tai Chi. And if Wang Dongyue did exist and he did do martial art, it could very well be something completely different to what Yang Ruchan does. Because the text itself does not include any physical motion or any movement or any hint on any movement, right? So there's no link between this and what Yang Ruchan do physically. There could even be a chance that Yang Ruchan learned the martial art from Chen village. He eventually altered it to his own liking or for any other reason he changed the motions and the, and the movement, the principles. And if he did get hold of the Tai Chi classic text, maybe that just inspired him on an understanding level, right? To not use brute force and seek for something else and how to dissipate power. But it does not physically teach him anything physically. So even if Wang Zhongyue wrote the text, there's no evidence that it's exactly the, the physical training that Yang Chan learned. Okay, so that, that's what I'm trying to, to, to get at. And again, we don't even know if Wang Zhongyue really exists and he really wrote that text. None of this is known. So another problem with this whole claim is Jiang Fa. Okay, so Jiang Fa is a quite a problematic person. Um, according to the Zhao Bao village, Jiang Fa learned from Wang Zhongyue, but they can't provide evidence of you know when this happened, how this happened. I mean, they just say that, and you know, they, they, now they do have like a like a like a village record but that can very well be fabricated. I'm not saying it is, but there's no proof that it is not. And you know, if you know the ins and outs of, you know, of Chinese martial art history, a lot of people fabricate text. So it's not like something new. Right? I'm, not, I'm not accusing them of doing it, but it's just not trustworthy at this stage. You know, they can't provide anything that we can carbon date to the Ming Dynasty and honor it, this unalterated 
evidence to suggest that Jiang Fa learned from Wang Zhongyue. There's not no evidence at the moment as concrete as concrete as that. So they claim Jiang Fa did that. Then uh, the problem there is then how and then therefore in the third or fourth generation from Jiang Fa it was passed to the Chen village. However, the Chen village also has records of Jiang Fa. And the interesting thing here is that in the Chen village, it's believed that what Chen Wang Ting had allocation with that imperial examiner and was on the run, he met with a guy called Jiang Fa who became his servant. And Jiang Fa was also supposedly escaping or hiding from some law infringement that he had. Maybe he killed someone, we don't really know. And they just mention that yeah, he is a, a well-versed martial artist and they kind of you know, did an adventure together. Eventually Jiang Fa supposedly came to the Chen village. And they even have a grave for Jiang Fa outside Chen village because you can't be buried in the village because you know the Chen, Chen member. But it was close by to the Chen village. So if that's our story to be believed, then Jiang Fa should have taught Chen Wang Ting and not from here, three generations down the line, then passed down to, to the Chen village. You see how there's conflicting stories. You know, and, and neither case can really provide a very solid evidence to, you know, to quash this argument. So another interesting thing when we are talking about Jiang Fa, right, is that now you can see on, over here I have a picture. Now this picture is very, very funny because according to the Chen family, the person sitting down is Chen Wang Ting. The person standing behind him on the side holding a poem is Jiang Fa. They even, you know, they even have writing of this on the... It's almost like a tombstone sort of thing, it's like a big rock with carvings on it. And so the, on that they actually say that the person sitting in Chen Wang Ting, the person standing behind is Jiang Fa. And that the relationship is that Chen Wang Ting is like the master, Jiang Fa is like the servant. Now there are, you know, there are stories about Jiang Fa is actually a servant only by name, he's actually uh, Chen Wang Ting's teacher. Uh, because he's hiding from the law, he's like a, he, he, he committed a crime, murder I, I would guess. And therefore he hides with Chen Wang Ting in the Chen village and pretend to be his servant, but he's actually his master. Um, yeah, but that is, it is one way of arguing about it, but um, that is not true according to, you know, the Chen village's record of Chen Wang Ting and Jiang Fa. And also, based on the possible age, obviously I've already said that Jiang Fa, the various claim to, to which period Jiang Fa lives in, but according to the Chen family's record, Jiang Fa is actually younger than Chen Wang Ting, so the chance of Chen Wang Ting learning from Jiang Fa is unlikely, okay? And obviously, you will never let your master stand behind you while you sit sitting down. That's like a big taboo in the martial art tradition. So if Jiang Fa is actually the one who taught Chen Wang Ting, then he can't be the one standing behind, okay? And obviously because of this, Zhao Bao village has made another claim to the same picture. They say, you know what, no, no, no. The one sitting down is Jiang Fa. Chuang Ting is the one standing behind him holding the poem. Obviously, this now makes logical sense based on the agenda of Zhao Bao village. However, if this were true, do you think the Chen village would actually keep this painting and, you know, and, and have it I believe they first found it in one of the ancestral temple, right? So, so to speak. So, do you believe they will actually hang up this this painting where they forefathers at the back and then you know an outsider is sitting in the front? I think it's highly unlikely, given how defensive the Chen family are to outsiders. They will, you know, if that is the nature of that painting, they will never hang it up. They will probably burn it and, and get rid of it. So again, I'm not saying that it's utterly impossible, but Zhao Bao's claim is more unlikely than Chen village's claim, right? But again, you can see how problematic these two villages are at this argument. They even have the same painting to have a different interpretation. And sadly, um, no one really can prove who's who in the painting. You know, for all we know, the painting could be about two complete different persons that's not even related to the Chen Wang Ting or Jiang Fa. You know, maybe someone found the painting and just, you know, dubbed it them. We don't, we don't know that, okay? I mean, the Chen family says the painting is of that and, and, and the Zhao Bao village says something else. I'm just showing this to you to tell you how confusing and 
complicated this argument is, and how neither side actually has solid evidence to disprove each other. But first of all, as far as the painting go, logically I would lean a bit toward Chen family's claim as to Jia, as to Zhao Bao's claim because Zhao Bao doesn't have this painting. Chen family has, and they will not keep it if the guy sitting down is not the ancestor. Furthermore, like I already mentioned, Chen family has a tomb outside of the village that's supposed to be Jiangfa, Zhao Bao village does not. And that also does not support Zhao Bao's claim where Jiangfa taught in the Zhao Bao village, and only after three generations it was passed to the Chen village, right? That just doesn't support the tomb. Of course, Zhao Bao guy is going to say that tomb is not Jiangfa. You can see where this goes, and um, they'll just discredit each other's evidence no matter what it is. So I don't have a, a beef in this argument, and I'm just presenting all the conflicting info so you can see how that this isn't a very clear cut problem, right? And you can't really get a correct answer. But overall, personally, within this argument, I lean towards Chen Village. And to add further to the confusion, Wu Tunan, right, who's a student of um, of Wu Jianquan, right here, running out of space, but I just remember, right, so it's Wu Tu Nan. And keep in mind, Wu Tu Nan is actually, um, he's actually a, a grand master of my Taiji master, okay? So my Taiji master has two masters. He, he first learned from Wu Tu Nan, and then he learned from, from Shi Ming. So just know that I actually have a connection to Wu Tu Nan. However, I'm not biased in that way. You know, it's like my master actually believed Zhang Sanfeng invented Tai Chi, but I don't agree with him. You know, he is my master when it comes to learning Tai Chi. He knows everything that I don't know, and, you know, everything he said will be right when I learn Tai Chi from him. But he is not an historian. He doesn't think like a historian. Neither do I. But, you know, I tend to look at things more critically than, than him. So even though he's a master of Tai Chi to me, he's not, I don't believe in his understanding of the Taiji's history, but he hadn't actually done the research himself. He, he just blindly believed whatever he was told. Anyway, so although I'm connected to Wu Tunan, I do not share his belief. So Wu Tunan claimed that in 1917, he went on an expedition to the Chen village, where he met uh, Chen Xin, okay, and where Chen Xin told him that he does not do martial art, but he's wanting to write a book to help to promote the village. And in the same time, he met another person from Zhao Bao village who came to visit the Chen village. And that person, according to Wu Tunan, told him that the Chen village had its own martial art, which is the Chen family first, or, or the canon first. And then Chen Changxing's time, Jiang Fa came to the village and laughed at Chen Changxing's martial art. Chen Changxing got upset wanted to fight Jiang Fa but lost badly and therefore started learning Tai Chi from Jiang Fa. And after that, Chen Changxing has two martial arts now, the Chen village martial art and Tai Chi. And when Yang Chan came, Liu Yang Chan was an outsider, he did not want to teach him the Chen family style, therefore he taught him Tai Chi. So according to Wu Tunan, that is why Chen Fu and Yang style look so different. And according to him, this was told to him by a guy from Zhao Bao village. Yeah, Du Yuan is the guy's name. So according to Wu Tunan, he met Du Yuan from the Zhao Bao village who, who told him this whole, whole thing. However, his story doesn't add up to the Zhao Bao side of the story, right? The Zhao Bao side says that uh, Jiang Fa actually predates Chen Changxing by many generations. It's actually from the late Ming dynasty. If, if what um, Wu Tunan claim is true, then Jiang Fa need to be in the, in the Qing dynasty, right? It's just two generations away from, from Yang Lu Chan. But according to the Chen village, other clan, he's on the same age as Chen Wangting, which is the early Qing dynasty. And according to Zhao Bao, he's from the Ming dynasty. So you can see that the massive discrepancy, right? If this person is real, I'm not saying he's not, but you know, they should have a more concrete understanding to what time period the guy is from. And the fact is they can't really provide evidence to exactly when this person was born or when he came to either Chen Village or Zhao Bao Village, right? The information is conflicting. And furthermore, Wu Tunan claimed that, you know, Du Yuan told him that. But if Du Yuan is from the Zhao Bao Village, then Zhao Bao Village believes in a completely different story now. So either Du Yuan was lying or the modern Zhao Bao people was lying, and we don't know which. So I'm not here to point fingers or to say who, who's right, just to indicate to you 
how confusing this whole claim is and you really can't simply believe any of them is true based on the evidence we have at the moment. And I don't know if we're ever going to have enough evidence because there's just simply not enough information or record to, to support any of these claims better than another. What we do know is that basically Wu Tunai is also very, is also not very trustworthy. He has been known to lie in the past. I mean, his martial art might be good. I mean, may, you know, there's a controversy on that too. We'll maybe talk in a, in a later episode. But he is known to lie and fabricate things when it comes to history. You know, man, specifically his age, right? He was known to have lied about his age, make himself uh, known, seem older. You know, he claimed, you know, he was like 100 and something. At the time, he was maybe only 80 something. So he's not a completely trustworthy person. We can't always trust what he says. And obviously, if his theory is true that he made this Du Yuan, Du Yuan's martial art is Tai Chi, but Chen Village martial art is not Tai Chi, then that would have to mean that Zhao Bao's form should look like the Yang family or the Wu family form. But it doesn't, right? If you see it today, it looks like Chen style more than Yang style or Wu style. So clearly, Wu Tuna at the time probably never met a Zhao Bao member. But if he did, he would have seen that they martial art looks more like, like Chen style. And that's why it gives even less credit to, to his claim. All right, now just where my Chen family got their martial art from, right? Now, Chen family believes that Chen Wang Ting invented it, which may or may not be true, but obviously he can't invent something out of thin air. So what influenced Chen Wang Ting or whoever funded the Chen family martial art, right? What source material did they work from? Now, the Chen family does not specifically say, right? They just claim that they ancestors invented Chen martial art. They don't actually say where they got the influence from. But if we use logic and, you know, and look through historical record, we can find something similar. Now, first of all, based on what other people say, right? Uh, for example, Wu Tunan and a lot, uh, you know, uh, Zhao Bao and a few other Wudang supporters, so to speak, they all discredit the Chen Village style by saying that you know Chen Village style is a Shaolin derivative. They say that because they say because you see they stomp their feet, they do fast punches, they do leaping and jumping. Those are all Shaolin style. Right? Those are external martial arts approach. We you know Wudang are internal martial. Arts. We don't do none of that. So essentially, what they are trying to do is to label Chen style as Shaolin. And therefore, they cannot be related to Tai Chi, which is Wu Dang. Okay, so that's the game. However, we already know that the, the relationship between Yang Lu Chan and Chen Changxing is undisputable, right? The lineage is the connection is clearly there, and how the Yang style came from the Chen style is also very visible, right? Based on if you analyze the form bit by bit, you can see how one could evolve into another. So it is impossible that Chen Changxing taught Yang Lu Chan something that is not Chen style. So that doesn't work. We've already talked about this in the last video, right? Where Wu Yixiang, right, the most important person in this whole conflict, he basically went to Chen Village, he went to Zhao Bao, he verified. And today we can see that the Chen style looks similar to Zhao Bao style, which means it is the same thing that Wu Yixiang saw. And therefore, it must be the same thing that Yang Lu Chan learned, okay? I mean, obviously, give or take, because Chen Changxing's version of the form will be different to the modern Chen style, because, you know, everyone slightly changes the motion, so, you know, it goes from the old form to the new form and all of that. So there are variations and, and you know, and things that are different. However, we can say for sure that the form itself is the same form that Chen Changxing taught Yang Lu Chan, okay? Also, if Chen Changxing has two forms, Chen Village and another outsider form, then what the Chen family do up to today should be drastically different from Zhao Bao. And that's not the case. They do the same thing, okay? I mean, obviously some people might argue that uh, Chen family just have Pao Chui, and the other one they told Yang Lu Chan is the out outsider's form. But you know, according to the same argument, Chen Village is so proud about their own style that they don't actually, you know, they don't they don't want to teach Yang Lu Chan their own family style. But in that case, you know, why would they want to learn 
change things outside the store if they think their own store is that good. So that doesn't that doesn't make sense. And of course, if you really look clearly, you know, if you look into detail, the the Canon first also has traces from Chen family's first form, right? And even for them, they say that the first form is a foundation form, and then the the Canon first is the secondary form, it's the advanced form, so to speak. You only trend it after you've done the first form. So I don't find that argument to be very convincing. All right, so. Obviously, the the chain stock cannot be a Shaolin based stock, right? Because um, there is no trace to the Shaolin Temple at 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 all. Now, the village themselves don't really talk about who founded it. But like I say, if you do some research and you look at historical examples, you will eventually discover that the chain style is very similar to the first classic written by General Qi Ji Guang. Now, Qi Ji Guang is a Ming Dynasty military general who is perhaps most famously known for his campaign against the so-called Japanese pirates that plagued the southern China seaboard, sea borders. Now, I, I say in very comments because a lot of those pirates are actually not Japanese. They just label Japanese pirates because they were Japanese in them, but they're not all Japanese. But again, that's luck for another time. So he was most famously for that campaign, as well as a lot of other military campaigns. He's quite a respected and successful military general of the late Ming Dynasty. And in his lifetime, he compiled a military manual, Ji Xiao Xin Shu. He also compiled Quan Jing, which is the first classic. Now I know his family known for saying that um, first martial art has very little use in military training. So he didn't really think first is important for soldiers. But he did believe that first training does give good foundation, stretching suppleness, body coordination that can then translate into weapon training. Okay, he did believe in that. And if you look at his first classic Quan Jing, you will see that there are a lot of movement. He has thirty two poses, right? But a lot of those movements are identical to the Chen family, and therefore by extension, similar to what Yang Taiji has, right? Even the name, for example, the first motion, Lan Zha Yi, Lazy Tying Coat. Chen family has that move, and you can still find traces of it in Yang family. Another one, Jin Ji Du Li, the Golden Rooster. Again, is you can find both in Chen style and in Yang style. Now people might think okay, Golden Rooster standing on one feet, on one foot, is a generic name, right? A lot of style has it. But if you look at the diagram, even the pose. Is very similar, or well, almost identical, and then Gao Tan Ma, high patting horse. I think is what people got translated to. The motion look different, but you know the name is unique enough to not exist in every other martial art style. And the fact that the first classic has it, Chen style has it, and Yang style has it also suggests a strong connection between the three. And the, and the next one obviously Dan Bian, which is even more iconic, right? This motion. It's a very very weird looking motion, okay. And people even to today struggle to explain the actual combat ability or the combat reason behind this move. I mean, everyone tried to explain it, but everyone got a different explanation, which suggests that there is no single source. People don't actually know what this move is is intended for. Again, that awkward weird looking move can be found in General Qi Ji Guang's first classic. And if that's not enough. There's also a move in the classic called Gui Jiu Tui or Gui Jiu Jiao, which is a, a low kick, right? It means like a, the ghost foot. It means that it's a very dece deceptive, surprising sucker punch ish kind of kick. Although in Chinese style, it's not called the same name anymore. They call it Die Cha, but the motion is unique enough where you see that exactly same te technique, where you fall down and you kick someone's foot out. And the next one that's similar is called Zhi Dang Chui, right? The, the pointing balls punch, I want to translate it in a very crude way. And that move again is found in the Chen style. It's not, I don't think it's found in Yang style anymore, but it's definitely in Chen style. Zhi Dang Chui, the motion, uh, according to the diagram, is, is pretty much exactly the same. And the next one, um, Qie Di Long, the ground dragon. Again, both the name and the, the, the pose, the posture, exactly identical to Chen family. And lastly, Qi Hu Shi, right? In Chen family, the name changed to um, 
it's, it's still tiger riding. I'm just trying to think. 骑虎，骑虎，抱虎归山，骑虎下士。This though, yes, I don't do Chinese stuff for very long time, so the name kind of slipped me. But you can still see that 骑虎 riding the tiger is still found in Chinese style. I think it's still called riding the tiger. Just added one or two words afterwards. And in Yang style, they they change the name to 抱虎归归山 holding a tiger, returning to the mountain. But you can still see the clear connection. So. From these example, you can see that this is not coincident or happenstance, right? The Chen Marshal definitely has a connection to Qi Ji Guang's first classic, and this also then discredits this whole uh Zhang Sanfeng claim because Zhang Sanfeng has nothing to do with Qi Ji Guang's first classic uh thirty two poems. So if you're using logic and reasoning, we can see that. The earlier source is Qi Ji Guang's Thirty Two Poems First Classic, and then it influenced and turned into Chen Family Martial Art, and then that eventually turned into Yang Lu Chan's Personal Martial Art, which he eventually dubbed Tai Chi. And once you understand that, you see that now these other claims really make much sense. All right, I hope this video has been interesting and everything up to now has been making sense. If you have any questions, something you're confused with. So you like to discuss? You're welcome to leave them in the comment below, and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you can, please subscribe. Uh, you know, support me on Patreon. It would be greatly appreciated. And you know, the more support I have, the more time I'll be able to get to create more meaningful content in the future. And the next one, now we've covered the two main claims, Wu Dang and Chen Style. We also covered. Uh, Zhao Bao, which is sort of related to Chen Style. In the next two video, we are still gonna look at other claims that are lesser known, but they also sort of some big enough that we need to address them. One is Hong Dong from Shanxi. One is the Li family from Tang Village, Qianzai Temple. Right, that's one of the more prominent recent claims that a lot of people starting to support. So in the few in the next two video, we're gonna discuss how viable these two claims are. So stay tuned, and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, stay safe and stay away from crowd, and keep yourself safe and healthy. Thanks for watching Tracer's Martial Channel, and I'll see you next time.